Welcome to college basketball here on ESPN Plus. Tonight from the Dunn Center, Clarksville, Tennessee, it's Florida A&M on the road to take on the Austin P. Governors. Welcome courtside as we get you ready for Governor Basketball. Zach Kalata, Bob Hillman, to bring it to you back to back. Got a double header sword, Zach Kalata, as we wait on these starting lineups for the Governors. While that intro is taking place, we'll remind you the starting lineups are presented by Jostens. Jostens, the official recognition company of the Ohio Valley Conference. We'll catch the governors as they come out of the tunnel and then we're gonna get right to the keys to the game. But hang tight right now. There's one of the starters. This is a new lineup as of last night. First starts off with Elton Walker. Carlos Paez being introduced to the home crowd. Scooter Joseph, that three guard set of types we talked about last night and the last two to be introduced, Reginald G, the transfer from Alabama State and rounding out the all OBC preseason player of the year, Terry Taylor. So for the governors, it's Walker, Paez, Joseph, G and Taylor. And for the visiting Rattlers of Florida A&M, Cameron Reeves, MJ Randolph, Johnny Brown, Bryce Morang, and DJ Jones. As we welcome in Zach Galata. Zach, you were spot on last night when you talked about, hey, these turnovers are a problem. That probably factors into one of the keys to the game brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Absolutely, both these teams have had struggles uh, this year in the turnover battle, so this game, it's all about who can control the ball and who can control the glass. These governors got to match the athleticism of uh, Florida A&M. Uh, and, and those are the two right there. Maine, got to gotta control the ball, got to control the glass. So two different situations for the governors in back-to-back -back nights. Again, the keys to the game brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. And especially this holiday season, they would encourage you to designate before you celebrate because fans don't let fans drive drunk. Sack last night, a very disciplined McKendry team gave the governors problems. This is a Florida A&M team that's going to push the basketball. A little more helter-skelter up and down the floor. How do you play the middle if you're Matt Figger and the Govs? Well, you got to think, you know, you're athletic yourself. Uh, you know, we saw last night when, when the game got up and down in transition, and that's when the governors came alive and was able to push that lead. So, so maybe that plays into your hands. But, yeah, I'm looking for a more fast-paced game tonight than the, the slow, disciplined pace of McKendry. Yeah, methodical is probably another word we'd throw in there yeah, as well. Absolutely. Series history? Well, there is none. First time these two teams have met, the series history presented by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife partner with us to protect Kentucky's wildlife heritage. So the two big guys, DJ Jones for Florida A&M, Taylor for Austin P. controlled by the governors. Here's Carlos Pias as we get you underway here in the Dunn Center in Clarksville. Two games within 24 hours for the governors. And then there'll be a long stretch. We'll be off until uh, next Monday, and that other team comes to down from the north. Tap in, no good by Taylor. Oh, he made a living of that last night in the paint. He did. Terry on Joseph with a miss early, but I'm looking to him to see if he can get going like he did last night from beyond the arc. This is Cameron Reeves, second leading scorer on the team. Here, deflected ball picked back up by Brian Murray. He's top of the key. Governor's coming out man to man. This is the guy you want to keep your eye on. This is MJ Randolph, number three. And he comes out firing early on. Governor's right with the defensive board. And we'll go the other way. One minute gone here in the Dunn Center. Who says the pandemic will keep folks away? A couple of VIPs in the building we might want to talk about in a little bit, Zach. Absolutely. Down in the end zone, somebody uh, maybe who this court was named after. Here's Paez working against Randolph. Now cross court, air mails it almost to the bench. Governors recover, three to shoot. What Taylor from 25, oh. in and out, no good. That's a guy even shots like that I even expect to make. Here's Reeves. He hails from Champaign, Illinois. All the ways from Champaign, Illinois to Tallahassee, Florida. Now Reeves backdoor, lost it on the quick pass. Now picks his dribble up. Here's Randolph, they list him as a guard, but nice that's a big move. man move that's underneath a nice by Randolph. Up and under right there. 
Leading scorer on the team, MJ Randolph, averages 13 a night from the coastal city of Pensacola. There's Taylor, they triple him, and he'll feed it to a streaking down the lane, Walker, who cannot finish. But unlike the first half last week, the Governors get to the free throw line early tonight. Early, I, that was one thing I was surprised last night with, was our, our, our lack of getting to the paint, getting fouled, but early on here, getting to the line. Walker with his first start of the season last night, in and out. But coming off the bench, or excuse me, he's had three straight starts. Coming off the bench for the Governors, misses on the first. A&M by two with two minutes gone here, first half from Clarksville. And Walker good on the second. And the early press coming on here. And Walker, another Floridian, hails from Miami. Can't get much further south than that. Here's Randolph and just unable to handle the pass as Reeves. Turnover, A&M. Both teams with a little full court pressure. We'll see if that's sustainable as the night goes on. Actually for both of these teams as well. Skip pass underneath now Taylor. Joseph left hand, got, got it to it fall. To he is really coming alive these past couple games. First two of the night. They call him Scooter. Now Piaz, much more aggressive defensively, even here in these first couple of possessions from the Governors than perhaps what we saw all of last night. Randolph again. Now the turnaround. Johnny Brown, no good. Up ahead, this is Walker, one of two now cross court. Here's G, his jumper along the baseline right in front of the A&M bench. He left it short. It's a little early for a step back there. But. And Randolph lost the handle, but last touch by the Governors. Governors had taken the lead briefly, three to two. Now we're at three minutes gone into the game. In from the capital city of Tallahassee at HBCU, oh, and good. with the dunk attempt was DJ Jones and uh, great defense to go up there and challenge that one. Yeah, he that wanted to dunk. A, ooh, Man, they're the athletic. This, you know, say Murray State. This is clearly the most athletic team the Governors has seen this season. You can see it Absolutely. with that paint presence right there. Here's Brown. He'll give it up. Randolph reverse. Good. Another one. Another little up and under right there. He's crafty. Right back down the floor. He's used the rim as the shield. Here's Joseph with another two. I don't know. That's what the Governors wanted in that situation. A couple early jump shots. Randolph. That's what happens when you get up and down the court, though. Get a team to take some early shots. And Randolph with a miss. Jones with a follow after the offensive board. That was way too easy. Now keep in mind, Joseph is from Louisiana. DJ Jones is from Baton Rouge as well. Cajuns on the floor tonight. Now loose ball out front. Piaz comes back up with it before he gets to the backcourt. Up and off the glass. Boy, you love that from Piaz. We might be out of here by 8.30 tonight the way these two teams are going up and down the floor. Jumper good, DJ Jones. He averages nine on the season. Only a 54% shooter from the field. But early on, you can see this is a really Athletic team. Here's a steal by Randolph. He'll go against Taylor with the left hand and good. And the governors and Matt Finger said, no, thank you. We seen enough. A&M by five early, 15-22 to go first half. More basketball after this. A&M has doubled up on the Governors 10-5 here as we play after the media timeout. Actually, a timeout called by the Governors. Allotted to the media. 15-22 first half here. And now a little different look from A&M. They got one of the big guys, Evans DeSur, out of Haiti. 
big wide body. Averages seven a game. Just insert it into the game after the timeout. Here's Paez and the Governors. Gov's going a little bit bigger with Corbin in there down low. We did not see Corbin Merritt last night. Good point. Here's Woodard inserted after the timeout. Woodard along the baseline. No good right at the buzzer. Rebound Taylor. No good. A lot of green and orange in there. Here comes Randolph. MJ wants to run. Gives it up. Reverse no good. And the ball touched on the baseline, I believe, or was it basket interference? Check that. They get the serve with a foul. Terry still yet to score, but still got to go look down and get that ball into him. A lot of good things happen when you go inside and out. Here's Woodard to Paez. Joseph Merritt for three seconds. Oh, oh, foul on the floor. Or Merritt was in the lane quite a bit. Tell you what, the moment that ball is going down low, Florida A&M doing a great job collapsing, making the Governors kick out, and they're going to win this game. They might need to hit some outside shots. Foul on Reeves. Up and good. There it is. There it is, Joseph with his first. You know, that was almost a set shot. <laughs> Not yeah. a lot of elevation on that. It's one of the things a lot of people after last night's game were talking about with the Governors. A hard time with a uh, jump shot. And now this is not good news for A&M. There's an injured player on the floor. And I, Holding his knee. Yeah, there was some collision right in the paint. Right knee. Let to see who it is. I believe it's Javon Smith just inserted after that media timeout. Never like when a player. Hope he just got. This guy touched the ball. Taylor with the left hand. That's what you throw. want right there. Get him the ball down low and let him make a play. A hard time getting over the rim <laughs> right there, but it did right. Yeah, but it's Terry Taylor's first bucket of the night. Here's DJ. Great defense. Jones, and he's stripped. Uh, Taylor will go coast to coast Colton. with the left hand high off the glass. If you're Florida A&M, you do not want to see him get it going. Tied at 12. 12.25 well, to go first half. I might have jinxed this, but I think we're going to get out of this arena pretty quickly tonight. These two <laughs> want to go up and down the floor. Here's Reeves. I tell you, Penetrate, everything with A yep. and M is penetration. Penetration, Zach. yep. And not a lot of yep. perimeter jump shots mm -mm. at all. Mm -mm. I haven't seen a whole lot of that. And a starter, Johnny Brown, returns. He'll replace DJ Jones. Brown, the freshman, six nine from Daytona. Now Taylor, another one. A little lefty from about Oof. 15, just inside the line, no good. Jameer Williams with a rebound, and now Taylor with a steal. Oof. And offensive foul. He knew it. Yeah. Little argument from Terry Taylor uh, in that case. We'll step aside. Governors in A&M, 12 apiece. Under 12 timeout, first half. Back after this. Randolph with six as we come after the break. A&M for the Governors. Joseph with five and Taylor with four. And then it drops up precipitously from there. 12-12 the score. After the Terry Taylor offensive foul and turnover, A&M will come full court. This game is much more fast-paced than yesterday, but the Gov's doing a great job of holding on to the ball. Only two turnovers so far in this game. This point last night, I think, was up to eight. Yeah, I just so. don't see either one of these two teams also scoring 80 like the Governors did, or 86 in yeah. particular, like the Governors did last night. Now eight 
on the clock. They tried to get to the sir on a cutter to the lane, and he knocked it out of bounds with the left hand. That's yeah, so another turnover for A&M. They are up to six turnovers so far in the half. That's a battle that I think whoever can win that one will have the advantage in this game. You got a little zone defense first time tonight for A&M. Yep. Three-pointer up and good, DJ Peavy. Don't think he scored last night, but a early shot there for him. Now keep in mind, Jordan Adams not playing again tonight. And the talk pregame was they hope to have it back by Murray State Monday night the 21st. That's an ESPNU game. Randolph would penetrate, and then he's going to throw it to DeSir. Big guy working against Taylor. Turnaround good. Nice. Wow. He is nimble on his feet there with that turnaround. Big wide body. Turnaround jumper good. Austin P by a point. Florida A&M with the zone trying to force Austin P to make some outside shots. A&M coached by Robert McMullen. And a turnover a little by the Governors. There. McMullen's been around the block or two. You can see him talking to MJ Bacon, or MJ Randolph rather, over there. <laughs> He's got quite a, uh, not only resume, but uh, itinerary. Uh, don't want to Google map his journeys as a basketball wow, coach. He stretches been... all the way from China to Nigeria <laughs> to Oregon. And as we mentioned, a graduate of Birmingham Southern. This team has played all across the country, too. Here's Woodard with a oh. steal. And Randolph picks right his pocket, returns the favor. And this is an AM team that's played in Georgia, played at Oklahoma over the weekend, and now find themselves in Clarksville. They've been doing some traveling. Turn around, lefty oh. in and out. Johnny Brown, that's the lefty we've been looking for. Yep. A bevy of them last night. Here's Peavy. Wanted to go Lopez Brown fronting Taylor in the post. Reginald G at the scorer's table. And before that, a turnover. Another one for the Governors. Three straight empty possessions for the Governors. Hanging on to that one point lead. Now Woodard will exit. So it's Peavy Taylor, Paez, G. And also on the floor for the Governors. You know, the moment Florida A&M backed off the pressure and went to the zone, Austin P with three straight turnovers. Peak was the fifth governor I was missing a moment ago. Here's a three-pointer in and out, no good. Crashing the boards is Morang and the big guy again. How do you have to sir? Oh, Taylor wanted to shoot that one. Here's Peavy. Now Ooh. shoot it from here. No, Taylor. He'll draw the yeah. double team even in the zone. Coming out Ooh. of it. Paez. Good look, but he'll try this ah. one. That's no good. G with the right hand, no good. And the governors can't get a bucket to fall here in the last two minutes. And my have they had their chances. Gotten some good looks, just cannot hit from the outside right now. Reginald G to the line. In the starting lineup last night, he's part of this new lineup that uh, the Governors have uh, rolled out last night. And that was Paez, Joseph Walker, Taylor, and G. G in place of peak, but now in this combination, both are on the floor. G with one of two there. Ties it up at 16 apiece. Nice pressure from Carlos Chino Paez, causing another turnover for Florida A&M. Yeah, Reeves the leading assist person on the A&M team with 10. Also leads him in steals with seven. And that's a turnover that's gonna be charged to him just moments ago. Peavy with the left hand and could not get it to fall, but he 
two will head to the free throw line. A nice attack right there. As a guard myself, you'd like to see that. You know, with the length of Florida A&M, you might need to stop a little shorter and get that floater off. BB only two of eight from the free throw line so far this season. Like the aggressiveness, no, early by DJ PV. Good on the first one. Coming in tonight, averaging just under three a game. And he's got the second one coming up. That puts the Governors in the lead for the moment. Also, Austin B already in the bonus. Here with 8-16 remaining first half. PV good on both. Now Randolph returns, one of the starters for A&M, as does DJ Jones. Taylor with a rare appearance on the bench. He had 30 plus minutes last night. Yeah. We were actually commenting on yeah. it as the game went on. You gotta wonder how, uh, how fatigued he is. Figure he'll be in there until the uh, under eight timeout. Austin P going with a little zone as well. Here's a three-point attempt by AM in the corner. No good. DJ Jones over peak for the rebound. Hands it off Randolph. to MJ Randolph. Randolph's got eight, averages 13. He's right on schedule and then some for the Rattlers of Florida AM. Back to an 18-18 tie in the zone defense. Here's G. Good. There it is. Austin P needs that. Got a shot from the outside. Nice shot by Reginald G. As Zach just mentioned. Now the Governor's retake the lead, 21-18. Governor's with his own look. In the corner. Force another turnover there. And stepped on the sideline. AM turns it over. To give us a chance to head to break. Austin P21, Florida AM 18, 707 remaining in the first. Part to keep Kentucky wild. Zach and I a few days off. <laughs> Remember, ESPNU will be here on Monday night, the 21st, and that team from uh, up north will be back again, Murray State. And we've already seen, if you're a Governor fan, we've already seen kind of a flip-flop and how you would approach this game. And what I mean by that is uh, Eastern Kentucky was so dominant on their floor against mm -hmm. Morehead State, and guess what? They got, in some people's eyes, upset yeah. last night yeah. when Eastern – had to go to Moorhead and pretty handedly too. Yeah, it was was not a doubt for a while. There's Piaz for three. Nice. Biggest lead of the night so far for the governors. It's plus six. And I just mentioned that because the governors are kind of hoping for that kind of turnaround. Yeah. They get Murray State on this floor. In yeah. the meantime, there's a lot of basketball to be played here. And this is a very good tune up. You kind of wonder if it's, you know, six days out from having to play Murray again, if that's to your benefit, hard to tell, but that's a great player on the floor right there. DJ Jones. Great move. He's solid. Shot fake. Get the defender up in the air. One dribble pull up. Old That's school. Sleek, tall guy with a high hair. He's, he's yeah. got it going on. <laughs> he can play some ball. Yes, he can. Veteran move right there. Baez again. Back-to-back back threes. You love to see that if you're Coach Fig. A couple outside shots. Hopefully hit a couple more of those. Get Florida and him out of that zone. Certainly recognize the zone. Great point. One from the wing and one from the top. Here's Pee. He'll pick up Randolph, and you'll see a little bit of increased defensive intensity coming out of this there. break. That and the piped in music. Oop. There's Piaz turning around ah. up and good. Meringue out of Tampa. And that is a mismatch right there. Yeah. yeah you got the 6'5 senior on Piaz in that case. Yeah. It's like a 2-3 zone here for May and M. Not much Piaz can do there. Here's Peavy. He'll launch one from three. No good. Governors with an opportunity no. there to have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back threes. Instead, it'll come the other way for A&M. 
how quickly a whistle on the drive. I know Austin Pease hit a couple outside shots, but you still got to look inside. That best shot, if you want to shoot from the outside, is from in to out. You know, it's real easy to settle once you've hit a couple, but still got to look inside. Governors by five with nearly five left here first half. Here's Morang, picks his dribble up very high. Randolph, they list him as a guard. Also leads the team in rebounds, so go figure that as far as designation goes. Nice interior defense by the Governors. They come up with a steal. Matt Figure wants them to run. They're not quite doing that. Ah. Now a deflection there. Here's Sloppy Randolph pass. with a run out, easy off the glass. Quickly, Woodard will get in the game. Here's G from three. And now Quick the governor's. Quick shot right there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Quick shot. You have those back-to-backs by Paez. You get kind of comfortable yeah. shooting it early in the clock. Oh. Look at this. Good. Big boy with a flush. Florida a &M on a run right there. Cut it to one. It's a 30. You're going to take it full here at the 414 mark. Of the first half, Austin P. 27, Florida A&M 26. Hey, stop. Go to Instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first order using the code Order Today. J. Randolph leading all scorers here at the Dunn Center with 10 already for Florida A&M. Not too bad from the field, five of seven. No other player on either team in double figures. Governors lead by one, 27-26. Florida A&M shooting 60% from the field. You get dunks like Desir got before oh. we went to timeout, <laughs> and uh, that'll jack those percentages up quite yeah. quickly. Five on the floor for the Governors. It's Paez, Taylor, Woodard with the basketball. Let's see if uh, the Govs can get Terry Taylor going. Let's see if Peak can contribute as well. I'm yes, trying to keep quiet, it quiet last night. There, there, there it call. is right there. Call him out, right? You, yeah, you spoke it right there. Peak with the take. Athletic move right there. It was quiet last night. Let's see if he can get going. Two steps from the free throw line, off the glass and good. Here's DeSir again, looking for his 10th of the nice night. Nice defense. Blocked by Taylor. Paez wants to run. Instead, he'll pop from 15, couldn't get it to fall. Tipped away by MJ Randolph. Not only does he lead everybody in scoring, he's also the leading rebounder on the a and team, and you saw why just there. Yeah. Here's the shot, way high. That did not touch the rim. Actually, oh. right off of G's headband. <laughs> Weird play right there. Wonder why the shot clock didn't reset, but that ball did not go off the rim. It went off the high yeah. part of the goal. The backboard rather. Side out for the governors, or rather Florida A and M with 17 to go. Now Corbin Merritt returns. Corbin's a big guy. But to I'll also submit to you, you can see him with his tennis shoes hit the floor too. What color is that, Zach? Help oh, me out, man. That's a uh, it's a highlighter, highlighter orange there is what it looks like. Uh, peach. Yeah, yeah there He's you go. He's from Georgia. <laughs> put it on, there you go. Or a transfer from Georgia, yeah. I should say. We'll, put, we'll call it Peach. If we can get some quality minutes for Corbin Merritt. Governors. With Merritt oh. now. The sir. That wow. is a low down there. Tit off the bench. Governors back to a one-point lead with the basketball. We'll play under three first half. Taylor against the Sir. Left ah. it short. Tapped around. Off the Taylor back Taylor of Merritt. has been a little off so far. I'll tell you what, though. He won't stay cold forever. Still that zone defense. And now a deflection. Taylor having a little problem with the handle there. Here's Woodard. Yeah, like three on the clock. Great rebound, nice. Corbin Merritt. That, 
that's what you need if you're Austin P. That's what you're known for, controlling the offensive glass and going back up. Governor stretch the lead to three. Looks like they might try and trap there in the corner. Alec Woodard putting the pressure on. Randolph directing traffic with seven to shoot. Offensive foul, yes. Yep. Reginald G putting his body on the line. Got to love it. Randolph, one of the uh, A&M players with the fewest fouls on the season, only had seven coming in. That's an offensive foul and a turnover with the Governors by three. Kind of like this lineup. Just curious as to how the Governors are going to choose to attack it with the zone when you bring the two, bring the big Merritt in, and then of course Taylor and still got to look inside. Nobody Don't on the settle. Sweet there side. you go. G with a drive, ah. no good. The serve. Randolph, A and M on the run, in the corner, out back over. Clark, good. Good. That's good teamwork right there. It I is. like this passes. Got it up the court, moved the ball around, and got your the first three of the game for the Florida A&M Rattlers. This is every bit the test I knew Austin P needed. If you're a Governor fan coming in, you need to yeah. look at an athletic team like this. And I'll do respect to Carver Bible College at McKendree, <laughs> but this yeah. is what helps you get ready for the OVC yeah. right here. Taylor with a left hand, ah. no good. A little Rebound. off early. Johnny Brown, second on the team in rebounds. Florida A&M doing a great job on Terry Taylor. The serve was 30 feet from the basket. They were passing to the ball. He was like, I don't know. <laughs> this is not where I belong. That is not his environment <laughs> there. <laughs> but you guards love feeding it to oh, him, that's for sure. That's for sure. Time out on the floor. We'll hold it right here with 47.4 to go. Governors and A&M tied at 31. Pretty good basketball game here. Just a reminder, as we talked about, we'll be back with you on January 2nd. Jamaru Brown in Eastern Kentucky will be here at the Dunn Center. That'll be worth watching. And we mentioned that home and away that Eastern and Morehead had to start the season. In the same manner with our traveling partner, Murray State and Austin P, who started that season. Uh, Governors, again, as we mentioned time and time again, hoping for a split of that with potential yeah. win on Monday night. Yeah. But before that, the Governors must go on the road January, rather December 30th to Tennessee State, and that has not been a kind arena to Matt Figure and the Governors. You know, the Governors were on a roll last January into February and suffered their first conference loss of the season in Nashville, and that kind of set a little bit of a slide that they experienced in February of last year, yeah. right in the middle of the OVC season. So January 30th, Tennessee State. December 30th, excuse me again, and then January 2nd here, Eastern Kentucky. At the buzzer. Good! Wow. Randolph. From the half-court logo. I mean, if you're the governors, you can't do anything more than what you just did there. Alec Woodard right back. No matter the distance, both counted for three. Seems but like you like Randolph's at the buzzer, right? Oh, man. All right, Florida a and in for the final shot. Pretty good game, huh? Alec Woodard with a great defense. He might have took that last shot personal, came right back down with his own. Randolph. Great defense with by Alec Woodard. We'll head to halftime, no different than when we began. Austin P 34, Florida a and 34, halftime. We're going to get it started after this timeout. This is where the rest of the journey begins. Welcome back to the Dunn Center, Clarksville, Tennessee. Alongside Zach Collada, Bob Belvin, glad to have you along tonight. Last night and tonight, glad to have you here. Pretty good basketball game here. The Governors and Florida A&M tied at 34 apiece. Both teams in the locker rooms as we continue with halftime. Halftime stats brought to you by Wilson Sporting Goods. Wilson, the official basketball of the OVC, and I'm going to let Zach break all this down. We're going to put him on the spot. We're going to bring it all down here. 
Here's one player that doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. Yeah. Uh, MJ Randolph with 13, he's six of nine from the field and has not made his way to the free throw line. Plus he's got two assists to go with his team lead. For the governor's leading scorer, Carlos Paez with eight. Three of five from the field. Remember, Paez had back-to-back -back threes there in a sequence inside four minutes remaining in the half. So the Governors in Florida A&M have been back and forth. Biggest lead of the night so far by the Governors, only five. From the field, the Governors only shooting 39%. A&M 57%, and I'll remind you of a couple of dunks. <laughs> those high percentage ones that kind of jack those numbers up as well. From three-point range, Austin P 43%. And AM at 40. Governors have attempted 14 threes and AM only five. And that goes to something we touched on in the first half. AM wants to drive the basketball. Oh, yeah. And they are establishing themselves inside. I mean, they're using their size advantage and their athleticism to get in the paint. Um, and, and, and they're controlling the glass, too. I mean, that's one of the things we talked about is the keys of the game. And they're controlling the glass there, keeping Terry Taylor off the glass. And unusual only four rebounds at half from a guy who is normally you know a, a 10 plus a rebound kind of guy and keeping him quiet too and at the conclusion of last night's game against McKendry we failed to mention so shame on us governors were out rebounded by McKendry last night yeah yeah very unlike these governor teams the past few years who have always controlled the glass and they are they're struggling there now now the positives for the govs is They've only got six turnovers, and they're making outside shots. When you do that, you allow Terry Taylor to have a quiet half and stay in the game here. Taylor, two of eight from the field with only four points. And also DeSure off the bench for A&M with 10. He's five of six, had those uh, dunks and a couple of close range shots as well. So Randolph and DeSure in double figures for A&M. The Governors do not have a player in double figures. Paez leading the Governors with eight at the break. The score, Austin P 34, Florida A&M 34. We touched on the schedule earlier. We're gonna talk about it in depth when we come back. Halftime in Clarksville, Governors and A&M all tied at 34. Randolph, yeah. Tied at 34 at halftime as the ESPN Plus coverage of Ohio Valley Conference basketball continues tonight from Clarksville. Austin P and Florida A&M. Here's a look at the team's upcoming schedule presented by Graduate Nashville Hotel. Make Graduate Nashville your home base for game day in the Music City. And we got uh, a schedule uh, that we touched on earlier, Zach, when yeah. we got to it and, and you know, I make the argument it's a very difficult schedule and then followed up by four road games and then you got a four game homestand. So let's kind of break this down, yep. you know, in particular here. When the Governors play this coming Monday night, the 21st, it'll be their last game before the Christmas break. They'll come back on the 30th at Tennessee State, then back here uh, for that game with Eastern Kentucky. That's a four o'clock game here on ESPN Plus uh, the day after New Year's, very early in the year. And then that four-game road trip, we kind of talked a little bit about it. SIUE at Eastern Illinois, who's an up-and-coming team in this conference, we might add, at UT Martin and at SEMO. We've got a SEMO score for you here in just a moment. And then you flip it, what I think, you know, depending upon what you're going to do with that first six, what I think is four of the toughest games that you could have back-to-back -back yeah. at home with Tech, Jacksonville State, Belmont, and Tennessee State. So, you've been through this trip. What say is that Glotta? Yeah, man. I mean, you look at these games, and like you said, it's, it's a it's a tough and weird setup. Now, again, you, you don't know how things are going to play. COVID has changed anything. You know, these teams who have had natural uh, home advantages, you don't know if that's there anymore. Tennessee uh, State uh, has been a tough place to play. But, you know, with COVID regulations, you don't know how that's going to be. Stay tuned. Is It's been a a hallmark of the TV business for a long time. <laughs> Stick with us here. You just never, you never know. I mean, we, we come in tomorrow, yesterday morning, we find out uh, McNeese State has dropped yeah. off. And, oh, by the way, 
uh, stay tuned because we could find a replacement for that. It's just Tuesday <laughs> night here in Clarksville. That's the kind of the way to think about it. Yeah. But that's a look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by the Graduate Nashville Hotel. Make Graduate Nashville your home base for game day in the Music City. And that could include Belmont, Tennessee State. <laughs> a lot of great options there at Graduate Nashville. So we encourage you to stay there. Going to check some scores. Three conference games or games involving conference teams, we should say, uh, to talk about. We'll be back and go over those scores right after this. Look at the current conference standings and the road to the championship presented by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. Hey, look, you've been hiding your smile behind these masks for so long, <laughs> right, 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 Zach? I think we sure. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I bet you we unleash it with Delta yeah. Dental. <laughs> hey, three go. teams in action tonight. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk about a reminder for the OBC Championships tournament coming up in Evansville soon. Speaking of Evansville, they're a winner tonight in overtime over SEMO, 66 to 63. Transylvania, no match for the racers tonight in the bank. Final there, 63-35. And UT Martin earlier this afternoon defeats Bethel, who made about the 20 minute drive from McKenzie to Martin. Yeah. UT Martin over Bethel this afternoon. Wanna make sure you follow your school to the Ford Center for the 2021 OBC Basketball Championships. Join us March 4th through the 7th in Evansville, Indiana to watch Austin P compete for an OBC title and the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. For more information or to purchase tickets, it's real easy. Just log on to obcsports.com forward slash Evansville. You enjoy your time in Evansville? Yeah, great, great it's, venue there. It's a it, it's a great venue, always without controversy. Somebody says that somebody got preferential <laughs> treatment or what. You know how that oh, works. Oh yeah, great neutral site for the conference. People tournament. are going to complain always, but March fourth. Yeah, Zach just remembers a great run he had in the old <laughs> municipal auditorium in oh, Nashville. Yeah. So uh, it's hard to match that, right? <laughs> yeah, kind I'm of an unfair <laughs> question, you know, as we begin the second half, right? It's like, hey. A little biased towards uh, there. Bob, you forgot the 2016 team. <laughs> 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 right, right. That's what Zach's reminding oh, me yeah. of when we go. Here we go. Eight in with the basketball. Tie game at 34. Goes Zach Clotta, the... Bob Belvin from Clarksville tonight. A little different lineup than the start there. Peek in for Walker. Try and get the size there. Easy eight footer left short by Johnny Brown and the rebound to G. He's running ah. with Peak, lost the handle. Yes, he did. Turnover Governors. Now quickly hit. Here comes Randolph against Piaz. Looking for somebody underneath, and he's just content with bringing it out. And it'll run the offense. He'll get a screen high from Brown. Oh, Randolph, talking about going to the wow. rack. Look at that. Great floater. It's a veteran move. You can tell he's been in a few games. 15 of the night. Leading score for AM is true to form tonight for the team from the capital city. Here's the left handed shot up and no good. Peak by Joseph, but Mr. With Peak. Offensive rebound put back. And as Zach said, there must be a reason why Peak began the second half, right? Yeah. Comes through that the first bucket. A little bit more size there. 36 apiece. Here's a long three-pointer. That's no good. By Reeves in the corner. Tracked down with a rebound as D.J. Jones will reset the clock. Now the lefty will try from this corner. Good. Johnny Brown. Florida a &M settling for a few more outside shots, but gets one to go there. Brown averages 10. That's his first of the night. Oof. It's a three. Here's G from 18. Good. Pull-up jumper. Chino with a risky full-court cross-court pass there, but gets through. G gets a jump shot to go down. A and M by a digit. That shot is short. Last touched, I believe, by DJ Jones, and yes, indeed, it is. Woodard to check in. He will replace Joseph. 
Florida A&M back with the, the full court pressure here. And quite a few more jump shots to start the half here. Now they'll trap Taylor high near half court. He finds Woodard. Alley oh, he could not finish. Got it caught between the rim and the backboard. New shot clock. Now back to uh, 11. Now Randolph with a steal. Here's the matchup I like. Randolph, Taylor, boy. Nice. Randolph with a reverse off the glass. That's crafty. That's Get a top 10 play behind there. You. Oh, yeah. Nice Euro step. Especially considering who he did it against. Now Taylor, his three-point shot no good. Woodard tried to keep it alive, but instead was on the end line. Still a lot of settling both ways. Now you talk about, you know, dribbling the basketball using the rim as your friend, and that was the case in Randolph crossed over on Taylor, and Taylor had to go through the rim to get to Randolph with a kiss off the glass. Using that rim as your uh, protection against a Terry Taylor was going up to block a shot. Again, that's crafty. Randolph's going to be a threat in the MEAC, I can tell you that. Oh, He's yeah. got a lot of talent. Here he is with the basketball, and I jinxed him just then. He turns it over. Good defense. Woodard with a steal. Oh. And the finish. Alec Woodard getting up. Better watch him jinxing these guys. Here's a long three-pointer by Brown. No good. Now Woodard. Governor still trail by one. Here's Paez. They'll double him up high. And now Peavy will set the offense. That was a little bit of a flurry there. All in 30 seconds, I might add. Up and down. Here's Woodard again. Ooh. A little longer shot than the last dunk. And a miss. Beebe. A block there. Going to get him with a blocking foul. That tempo was picked right back up to start the second half. Yeah, on the floor for the Governors, Paez, Beebe, Peak. Taylor and Woodard, and for AM, it's Reeves Randolph with 17. Brown, Morang, and Jones. Morang and Jones, four apiece. They average themselves near double digits. This guy's been the star of the night so far with the basketball. Here's a three point attempt up and good. Another one. Johnny Brown. He's averaging 10. Now Brown has moved to eight. Early on in the second half, Florida A&M getting a couple outside jumpers to go down. That's something we commented in the first half they were not doing with the yeah. dribble drive penetration. Had two threes in the first half with one being close to half court. But already got two to go early on in the uh, second. Free throws upcoming when we come back. Mike Peake will be at the free throw line for the Governors. A&M by four. Talk to your employer or visit CoverYourMouth.com today to learn more. A little bit of head scratcher. Yes. Welcome back to the Nun Center. Austin P. Florida A&M. The Rattlers in Tallahassee by four. Free throws upcoming for Mike Peak on the fourth for the Governor's Piaz, PB Peak, Taylor and Woodard. That's what it was when we went to break and if you overheard us to start with, it's a head scratcher. And Terry Taylor with four points tonight, 24 minutes. Peak, no good on the first. Got to wonder if those minutes last night got him a little tired and the athleticism and size of Florida A&M is not allowing him to get going in the paint. Peak, good on the second, 71% from the line coming in tonight, one of two tonight. And now pressure from the Governors. Remember, they amped that pressure up near the end of the first half, created a couple of turnovers. Piaz was a big part of it. He picks up Cameron Reeves, the second leading scorer on this A&M team. Now deflection out front, Morang. Johnny Brown picks his dribble up a little too early. Here's the Sur with 10 off the bench in the first half, just throws it up and yeah. peek through the crowd with the rebound for the Governors. Terry Taylor giving up some size and some weight, but. Good defense there. Peak. Nice. Up and good. Nice left hand. Peak has scored the last three governor points. 
a little bit of a different approach there. We're seeing Peak penetrate from top of the key instead of residing in a low post. Here's Morang from the free throw line. Good. Nice. Great pull up jumper. Six on the night for Morang. So let's see what AM comes back with. And the answer is his own defense. in by three as we play 14 and a half and now a we'll whistle I was gonna go into sir I checked that meringue yep that was 22 or 23 governors with a new clock 20 to shoot Taylor with the left hand. And there Good. he goes. Let's see if he can get going this half. Good elevation. Governor's trail by one. Randolph almost lost it in front of his bench. Ooh. Now a whistle. Ooh. They got bailed out with that foul. Paez is coming for that steal right there. First of the night for Peak. He was, but what I was interested in is uh, six foot nine freshman Johnny Brown coming at us, and I didn't feel comfortable for where we are. <laughs> and we're about what, 10, 12 feet for press row? Yep. <laughs> or the original press row is a turnover. AM. Yeah, Brown with a little quick step in in front of his own bench. Gov's pressure causes some, some problems for. A and M, and just to reset, for A and M, winless on the season, and they've had some uh, pretty long road games as well. They opened up with Florida Gulf Coast, at Georgia, at South Florida, Nebraska. Both of those were canceled. Then they went to Oregon and Oklahoma. Now quickly ahead off the glass, Oof. no good, but left it. Put back. Bryce Morang. Morang. And Reeves left the shot long, but Morang was there to clean it up. Here's Paez up and under. Ooh. Now Woodard couldn't handle it. Good look. Governors with 15 Too to shoot. Strong of a pass. Phoebe, and they trail by three to the Governors. Here's Woodard to tie. No good. Tipped around. Taylor with an offensive rebound. They'll try to double him up. We'll see. Do we have a foul? Looks like it. Little uh, bump in there. It is a foul. Time to step aside. Florida A&M 48, Governors 45. 13 minutes to go. As we return with 13.09 to go, Florida A&M 48, the Governor's 45. A&M, Zach, 55% from the field. Gosh. Governor's 43%. That's a big gap. Big time. I mean, Florida A&M is getting it in the paint, inside, and it's showing there with the field goal percentage. Dribble penetration, oh. and now a steal on the inbounds pass. PB's pass deflected and stolen. Matt Figure has turned his mask into a <laughs> headband. He's so frustrated. He That's a bad situation yeah. coming out of a timeout, right? Yeah, you don't like that. You got to execute coming out of a timeout like that. Johnny Brown, the lefty freshman, no good. How about this for a mismatch? Brown defensively on Paez. Here's Peavy from 14. Oh, oh. Went all the way down. Taylor among the trees. And, oh. Good. And a chance for a three point play. Did he even see the rim there? Not with Desir, Johnny Brown, and Moran yeah. underneath. No way. I mean. No way. If Desir's like, where do you, how do you see it? Look. <laughs> Man. There's some things that. Uh, yeah. Defy logic. Yeah. And that was one of them right there. And this is something the governors terribly need. A chance to tie here for Taylor. And he's out the free throw. It's been quiet so far, but let's see if he can get going. 
Nine of the night from Bowling Green, Kentucky, the preseason All-OVC Player of the Year. Been that way for a while, actually. Here comes Randolph. Woodard defensively. Governor's go man. Randolph blows by Ooh. Woodard off the glass yeah. and good. Randolph's a stud. He <laughs> I'm is. telling you, he's good. a player. Yeah. Here's Taylor. Now Randolph could be on my team any night. Alley oop underneath. Ooh. Peak. Good return. Now I'll drive ah. inside with the right hand. No good. Here's that guy again that's he been is. fuddled to Governors tonight. He's got 19 with the basketball. They just haven't had an answer for him. Deserve pass a little too much mustard on it for Johnny Brown. Turnover A&M. Under 12 timeout. A&M on the road looking for their first win with a slim two-point margin. Back after this. Legends Bank. Member FDIC. Governors have 48 points, but not a single player in double figures, and we played 28 minutes so far. Yeah, it's an interesting, wow. quirky stat. It is. You know, as a, as a coach, you're looking at that. you got guys who've stepped up and scored a little bit, but, you know, it's interesting to be this late in the game and no one in double figures. Take a look at the five on the floor. Woodard, Paez, Taylor, Peak, and Peavy smaller lineup this time. We mentioned Taylor with 30 plus minutes last night. Here's Paez. Yes. Hit two of those back to back in the first half. Not so much now. And Randolph out of Pensacola with a basketball. The junior 6'4". Oh, Here's great Baez anticipation. With a steal against Clark. Oh. And we'll draw the foul. Good defense by the Goes there. Great anticipation. And you called it earlier, Zach, uh, with that foul by Brown on the high screen. You thought Paez had a chance in for a steal. Yeah. You know, as a, as a smaller guard, that's you got to be good at that. You got to be good at anticipation and First seeing time. that now. Yeah, first time at the line for Paez tonight. He's a 71% free throw shooter. That'll up the number just a bit. His 15th attempt on the season, good. Could have the first Gov and double figures on a make right here. Covers with three team fouls, A&M with four. Oh. And just like I've done last night, you jinxed the jinxed voters it. Tonight, I did. Should have waited. The governor's still playing behind. By a bucket. Here's Reeves. He's been kind of quiet Ooh. now. Peavy, did he get it? Yes, he nice. did. Last off Reeves. Great active hands by DJ Peavy. You no, know, he hasn't points. scored a whole lot, but he's been doing some nice things off the ball and on defense. Peavy, the Richard sophomore of Sabalo, Texas. Al Woodard, this looks like a defense designed to reverse the ball and then get Taylor in the low post. So instead, it's peak, perhaps. Turn around. Locked. Good interior defense. Jai Clark with the loose ball. I'll tell you what, Florida A&M has done a phenomenal job every time that ball goes inside, collapsing and making it difficult for the Austin P. Biggs. I don't know where they're going to stack up in the MEAC, but I can tell you one thing, Era. They're a top-tier team in the OBC by my estimation. Yeah. Just looking at the eye test here in the first Absolutely. 30 minutes. You, know, you, you look at that 0-4 record, and that's real deceiving at this early in the year. This is a good Florida A&M team. Well, and all the cliches apply this season. Wait it out. Yeah. Anything could happen. You never know. You know, all of those. <laughs> yeah. That's why you play the game. That's yeah. one of my favorite ones, right? There. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you, know, you get in the, in the BAC conference, there's a little whistle inside oh. before the ball is inbounded, and that's going to go against A&M. 
little illegal screen there. Here's Jai Clark, junior out of Orlando. I mean, back home in a ways to start the season. Yeah. Play the same opponent twice instead of maybe waiting for them to roll around in the second half of the season. Austin P. and Murray State not playing at somebody's house on the last Saturday of the season. Yeah. Right? Just a little oddities like that. It Up is, and ooh. good by Peavy. DJ Peavy. Great drive and floater. And translating that to Florida a &M, you know, I mean, pretty good, by our estimation, a pretty good team. And, you know, Absolutely. you stack up in the MEAC, and you know, they could be a top-tier team in that conference as well. Ooh. They've got some athletes, make no mistake. They sure can't handle it. Robert McCullum, the head coach, is very upset about something. Two empty possessions here. For A and M, he's not the least bit happy. Twenty to shoot, reset the clock here. Nine twenty to play. Governors by one. Fifty-one fifty. Oh, Randolph. Chino no Paez way. almost with another steal. Couldn't quite get to it. Give it to the big guy, Johnny Brown, with the left hand. Yep. And now we see saw back to an A and M lead by one. A and M back to the defense, or rather the zone. Yep. Now a kick ball ball right in. there. Yep. Right look for DJ PV. Got to get it to that high post when they go to a zone. Morang will return. He's one of the starters. He'll replace Cameron Reeves. Morang coming in, as we mentioned before, the senior out of Tampa, averaging nine a game. Now the jump step by PV Steele. Run out, Randolph. And he is fouled by Woodard, and Randolph had. The big ideas. <laughs> Defense leading the offense right there for AM. Right little G set to check in. First time this half for the Governors. 8.50 remaining. And now to the free throw line is MJ Randolph. A 52% shooter from the line. Gotta like the hustle by Alec Woodard. Getting getting there and just not giving up an easy two points. And it pays off right there. Yeah, sure does. Particularly in a one-point game. Governors trail by one. Each team with five team fouls. Randolph well above his average. He's got 19. Make it 20. He averages 13. So he's having an outstanding night. Very efficient, too. Nine for 12 shooting. Those are nice numbers. They'll inch those percentages up quite easily when you get oh, to yeah. about midseason. Paez cannot penetrate. Ten to shoot. Woodard in the corner. Ooh. Hit the backboard. That G. missed there. Penetration and a chance to shoot free throws for Reginald G. A little quicker pace in the first half. Reginald G, second leading scorer on this team, averaging 11. And G's perfect from the free throw line this season, and that continues. Got he's another now, one. Yeah, he's now 12 of 12. DJ Jones to return for A&M. Now he and Desir. Desir will go to the low block. A little question. Jones came in the game. He went immediately to the low block. injured quite a bit last year. You can look at the uh, the wrap. Played really well the first few games and then an unfortunate ACL injury. On that right leg. We are tied at 53. A little over eight to go. And Randolph wants that oh. shot. Unselfishly gives it up to the sure in the low post. Against Taylor. Great Nothing collapse. There. Shot good. Ooh. Jai Clark. Nice. You got to love that inside. Make the defense collapse and kick it out for a three. Clark with six. He's heating up. How they let Woodard roam the baseline, I'll never know. Now Piaz will back it out. Now he'll reset with 12. Oh. He's looking to pass, but that was just. Uh, I don't know what that was. Yeah. With all candor. Governor's trail by three. Now Governor's trail nice by five. Nice move. 
up and under, and he just he's got too much size in there. 22, Taylor, air ball. Oh. That is something you will That's, rarely see, yeah, if ever. Under eight timeout, A&M has taken the lead, their largest of the night, plus five. Ready for Monday night. Alongside Zach Klata, Bob Pillman, glad to have you along here on ESPN Plus, and we got a plus type of game. A&M leads Austin P 58-53, and we can break it down any number of ways, but first of all, MJ Randolph has been outstanding tonight for Florida A&M. Yeah. Terry Taylor and Carlos Paez with nine apiece for the Governors. I mention that because there is not a governor that's in double figures. The Govs have not had an answer for MJ Randolph and have just not been able to, to get it going offensively. Trying a little pressure then to your point, a little defense creating offense. Here's Randolph against Joseph Another, off oh. the glass and good. That's a tough angle that's he made a, that oh, shot at. Yeah. yeah, he has made some just veteran crafty plays this game up to 22 points a whistle underneath and that's going to go on A&M you know after doing a game like this Zach seeing a guy like Randolph you will not see him this season but it makes you look say every third or fourth day to go online and see how yeah. he's doing in this conference oh yeah right? yeah I mean he's clearly the most talented player they have on that team yeah here's Taylor Check that nope, peak. peak. Yep. You know, and, and it's a little different. Normally you see from guards an outside in type of game, shoot the three and then get inside. But he has made a living getting to the rack. You know, some some crafty up and under plays and some like we just saw there, a, a little, you know, eight footer kiss off the glass. I mean, he's real crafty and Peak now with nine, so we'll add three governors with nine. Yeah, he's the guy I'm going to watch, you know. What our Randolph did against Morgan State, you know, that's yeah. the kind of question yeah. that will come up in that MEAC. Here's a long three-pointer, no good, and the long rebound comes back out to Johnny Brown and a new shot clock for A&M. They lead by five with 6.10 to go. If you're A&M, you know, you don't want to settle for shots. You haven't so far in this game. Nope, there's another one, though. Oh, <laughs> well, prove me wrong. Johnny Brown from downtown. That's another one. Hey, while we're going with all these uh, acronyms, that's another SMH right there, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Boy, I tell you what, A&M's gotten awesome buzzer beater shots. Yeah from a long range. That doesn't really match the Randolph oh, three no. back from the oh, first man. half. I mean, Randolph's three was plus five feet from what Johnny Brown just hit. Gosh, yeah. Peak back to the free throw line for the Governors. Very important here. Governors trail by eight. That's their biggest deficit of the night. And now seven and Peak becomes the first Governor to get in double figures. Peak with only 24 minutes played out of the 35 so far, but he again is the first to cross over to double digits. Now he has 11. Here comes pressure. Can the governors create opportunities out of the pressure of the backcourt? PB will pick up Randolph. And it could be a case with Randolph, Zach, where he's been doing this all along. It's just Man. our first chance to see yeah. him, and we're like, wow. Oh. And there's a huge foul right there on Reginald G. That is a coach's nightmare, fouling the three-point shooter. And we'll see. Woodard's at the scorer's table, and G has got to walk by Matt Figure, so this uh, yeah. might be worth watching. I'll check that. He's going to remain there. 
during this dead ball. Nonetheless, yeah. he's probably got to cross him at some point in time. Yeah. That's the seventh point of the night for Clark. Just can't bail him out that way. And one more. Yes, there's three. There's G. Matt Figger doesn't even look at him. Yeah. That's tough. Is that fouling a three-point shooter late in the shot clock? That's probably uh, one of the five classic sins, right? Yeah, oh, man. Top and that three, might, maybe? Yeah, yeah, maybe top two and not two. You know, it's <laughs> just cannot do that. Here's Peak with 11. Woodard oh. at the 515 mark. Reflection. An eight-point advantage for A&M. Couple things to keep in mind. AM with 18 fouls. Austin P with six. Also, AM has three timeouts left. Not a lot of room for empty possessions if you're governors. Oh. And that might have been one right then. Yeah. Piaz having to go to the floor to try and save the ball, and he gets called for the Get foul. It. Yep. Get him with the foul there. So one and one upcoming here for A&M. You know, and that's where right here a, a turnover leads to two free throws on the other end. And You know, as a coach, probably at this point in time in the game, you're thinking, I probably got at best with 457 remaining and trailing by eight, at best I've got eight or ten more possessions. Yeah. So I've got to probably double the number of stops on the other end if I'm shooting 50 percent oh, right. are you playing those kind of statistics in your mind yeah and, and this is where oh, you don't like that pass at all I mean oh man it under went right to Matt figure oh, he's not happy under five this close you gotta execute you know but these are the type of games that a younger governor team needs they need to be in these situations um, you know, like we talked about earlier, they don't need to be in the, the, the blowout games that, you know, you just kind of serve know, no purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's not going to happen in this conference. This yeah. conference is, you know, every conference is, oh, well, we're balanced. Well, I'm telling you, folks, the OVC is going to be that way. Absolutely. Here's a long three-quarter oh good. Wow. Well, Jack Leaning Clark is really out lit of up. bounds. Wow. He's really lit it up here second half. And he's How about been this, hunting folks? Three-point shot. A and M by 11 with 4:10 to go. Woodard, no good. Taylor underneath, looking for double and, figures, oof. blocked, but he'll go to the free throw line. Yeah. You know, four minutes is still a lot of time for the governors. It's it's one possession at a time. You got to get stops, and you got to come down and get good shots. You got to execute. That's the tenth point of the night for Terry Taylor, so that keeps a very good streak of double-figure performances going. Taylor's been on the floor 32 minutes tonight, but only four of 12 from the floor. That's a yeah. big number. You know, in, in credit Florida A&M, they have done a phenomenal job making his life hard down there in the post. So with four to play, the Governor's trail by nine. Oof. And oh. now a turnover by a&M, that'll take us to the media timeout. A few extra steps there. A&M 68, Austin P 59. Hang with us till... That final horn means it's three minutes, 56 seconds till the finish line. A&M on the road looking for their first win. They come in tonight 0-4. Can they pull the upset here against the Governors? Peak with 11. Taylor with 11. Taylor with 13. Yep. That's what you want. That's how you execute out of a timeout. It's real interesting to watch Matt figure that. He's like, he turns <laughs> to his bench and say, that's what we've been trying yep. to do all night. Absolutely, you knew a design play coming out of that media timeout Absolutely. to get Taylor the ball and low. And that's what we talked about in these situations. Close game, under four left. Got to execute and got to get stops. Here's Morang. He'll uh -oh. feed it in the corner, three-pointer. This one's long. Peak with a rebound. Here's 
Woodard. This is Peavy. We move toward three minutes to go. A&M by seven. It is a three-possession game. That's what you Here's need right Peavy. there. Yep. 13 and a chance for 14. Yeah. Great execution out of the timeout. You get an inside bucket to Terry Taylor, a stop on this end, and a chance for a three-point play. This is what you need out of a timeout. That'll put A&M in the double bonus. They're over the top with 10 team fouls. Desir leaves the game. They brought Clark back in. Yes, they did. Yep. A peak. Here comes the Governors defensively with pressure. Randolph, uh, I don't think the Governors have a defensive match for him off the dribble, even at half no. court. Woodard will take his turn now. 15 to shoot. Now, this is this single out penetration. Oh. Now, Randolph draws the foul. And this is no yeah. different than they were doing to open the game. Oh, yeah. But in this case, they're just going to clear out, yeah. run Randolph near midcourt. Yep. In this case, Woodard, the uh, defensive guy that got beat. And now Randolph back to the free throw line. He's one of two there tonight, 22 on the game. He's 10 of 13 from the field, and a lot of those have been close range with the exception of the bomb there, and he gets a free throw. <laughs> oh, yeah. 69-64 with another free throw upcoming. A&M with the lead. Both. Hard to believe he's a 52% free throw shooter. Yeah, wow. Those two look good. Now back to a zone for AM. Governors down two possessions, two and a half to go. Here's a two point, three point check by Joseph. Wow, no man. good. Peak with his 15th of the night. Really come alive here in the second he half. Has. Peak. He has. Florida AM looking to do the same thing, clear it out and give Randolph. Room to work. Gov's got to be ready to have someone to help. Oh, Woodard with some pressure. Now the corner. The shot short. Oh. Randolph with a rebound. Loose ball. Still loose. Peaks got it. Randolph picks his pocket in the lane. Still no whistle. And now with 18 to shoot, Randolph oh. will reset the offense. What a flurry. The Governors could yeah. not come up with a loose ball. Oh, this is key possession of the game here, no doubt. Big time right five. here. Randolph, jumper, and good. And that is a guy who's been in these situations before just making a play. That's a dagger. Six-point lead, 90 seconds to go for A&M. That hurts. Peak oh. blocks. Foul. And Peak back to the free throw line, and this is obviously – in a game of this type, this is where you catch up. Yep. Run the you free love throw you line. love going inside. Score with the shot or with the clock stopped. That's the that's the best thing you can do right now. Get it inside. Force them to foul you. Get a couple points here with the clock stuck. Got the first. Peak is seven of eight from the free throw line tonight. Remember, the Governors did not get to the free throw line a lot last night. Same for McKendry in that case, but yeah. right here, right now, when they need it, the Governors are indeed getting to the free throw line. And Peak has emerged here in the last six to eight minutes as the go to guy for the Governors. Back into the one and one. Good. Still a two possession game. Now they'll bring Joseph out to guard Randolph. He'll defensively. take his turn. And again, at this point for AM, it's just clear it out and let let Randolph go to work. Not a lot of science here, is it? <laughs> Talk about science throughout this, the country right this now. This late in the game, it's it's players making plays. One minute to go. Oh man. Randolph, this is from three. Oof. No good. Did he even touch the iron? No loose ball. Oh. And now Got a we'll foul wait and call see. on. The question is, did it I do not believe it hit the rim. That's what the question is on the oh. shot clock. Refs are going to take a look at that. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It. Yeah, that's going to warrant a look in the truck. 
and remember, I made a comment. I didn't think it touched the rim right there. And yeah, hey, I think you're right. Randolph used all the <laughs> clock. I think he launched it with about two seconds to go. Yeah. You know, I, I know he's had a phenomenal night, but that might be his only second three-point field goal of the night, the first being a desperation near half-court three-pointer that he made. But uh, I if I'm coach for – Florida a and I'm, I'm telling him, hey, get get to that mid-range and in where he's dominated yeah. this game. And in this case, he would have preferred to take it all the way to the rim. Yeah. Credit Joseph was a pretty good defense. And yeah. Hey, back to Woodard guarding him. It wasn't bad defense no. at all. No, not not at all. I mean, he, they, they put great pressure on him. This is just a guy who's making plays. How frustrating is to be on the defensive recipient end oh, of that? Oh, man. It's one of the most deflating things when you go out there and you do everything the right way, and you know sometimes it's just it's good defense, better offense. I'm continuing looking at the monitor. Generally, they play the Jeopardy theme. I'm not quite sure what the uh, <laughs> uh, what the musical background is to accompany this. Sounds like a little elevator music. Yeah, I feel like I'm about ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Make no mistake, this is a crucial review here that is going on to determine possession. Four-point game, under a minute left. That figure wants to get a peek, too, but they're going to kind of block his view, so he'll return to the bench. I've always liked this because this is kind of like at halftime when the grad assistant or the director of basketball operations will come to the table yeah. and get the get the uh, first half stats because they now Matt figure has been sitting back <laughs> in his quarters. Yeah. yeah. You generally got a grad assistant that's going right. down there and he's looking yeah. over the edge. He's Coach trying, over there yeah. trying to take now another Robert glance. Robert McCullum <laughs> is going to send somebody down there and they say indeed they're going to bring the two coaches in. It's and we had a review at the end of the women's game in which uh, Chattanooga defeated the Lady Govs on a last second yeah. buzzer meter. Heartbreak That loss. precipitated a review. Yeah. Heartbreaking loss for the Lady Govs. Yeah, that was a tough one. Now, this very same monitor and uh, pretty much been in use here. And the determination of this possession will wait for the whistle. I now they're going to the official score. And it, you might not recognize the official score with a mask on, but it's SID Emeritus Brad Kirtley. How about that? <laughs> and it will be Governor Basketball. Governor All right, let's reset it for you. AM and 72, Austin P 68, 59.51.9 seconds, rather. Huge. Now Robert McCullough is going to get an explanation at the A&M bench. Huge possession here for the Governors. You got to think. I know Terry Taylor has been been cold tonight, but I'll still be looking for them to go to him. So still a two-possession game, so let's reset it and see where we go. This is Joseph trying to penetrate Ooh. off the glass. Left it too long. <sighs> Tapped by Taylor, no good. They get the offensive rebound. And Peavy and a new clock. 35 seconds to go. 16 on the shot clock. G. <laughs> off the glass. It doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but that was a great seal by Terry Taylor. Sealing the big man so G can get that easy layup. Underneath. All right, time to reset again. A&M 72, Austin P 70. It will be A&M basketball, and here's another bit of math. 32.2 to go in the game, Ooh. and a 30-second yeah. shot clock. Now, realistically, you could get a two-for-one if you're Austin P. You're not really interested in that. You just got to buckle down and play defense here. Yeah. Uh, but it's mighty close with that two-second differential. There's no way that you're going to allow A&M to go to the end of their shot clock no, in this uh -uh. case. You've got to uh -uh. force something early. You got to. we look at some pressure. And, and Jai Clark and Cameron Reeves check in. Reeves wanted to check in after the review, 
but he was not on the floor when it happened, so they sent him back to the scorer's table. He got, going to get back in the game now. Uh, watch my English. My gots and gets. Well, here we go. Well, what do you do here if you're Austin P? Are you going to pressure full court? Got to force him, got to press, got to put some pressure, try to keep the ball away from Randolph. No question. Yeah. Who's going to get the basketball? It, though, you just mentioned it. We, we, we've said he's only a 50% you know, uh, the free throw shooter. He's made a couple tonight, but you know, you, you got to think if he does get the ball, maybe you take a shot. And, and Clark is the only player with double figure attempts versus Randolph. Randolph with 15 and Clark with 10. And they're going to guard Randolph like you would never believe. And now a timeout. Great pressure. Timeout. That's what he got them for. Yep. They still have two more. And that's another important factor. The Governors do not have any more timeouts. A&M has two remaining. Yeah. At this point, you just hope they've uh, they've practiced enough of these situations, you know, in practice to say, you know, these guys know what to do uh, in, in this type of situation. Yeah, that's a great point because you can make the case, hey, we've had games canceled. We have not had to travel in some instances. So – we practice this. Yeah. Well, it's still hard to simulate. It yeah, it, it is. It is, you know, and that's where, you know, you, you're thankful for games like this because, again, they prepare you. A game like this is going to prepare the governors for OBC play. Now the question is, can they get the W and can they create a turnover? It's all about turnovers you got to create right here if you're Austin P. Oh, now quickly in the front court to Reeves. So the first part of that mission is accomplished, and the foul comes early. So Reeves will head to the free throw line. He does not have an attempt there tonight. In fact, Reeves has not scored tonight. Yeah. And coming in, he was their leader in steals. He was averaging 9.3 per game. That's surely the scouting report of just looking at where we are in the game dictates you foul Reeves, and just like that, he makes it a three-point lead, and this is a big free throw upcoming big free throw. for Cameron Reeves. Out for Clark, in for Jones. Some more size will A&M. And Reeves will miss, miss on the second. Here come the Governors. Chance to tie. Now, do you look for a two here or best shot? Uh-oh. Joseph for three. Long ball, ah. no good. And a reach-in foul on Reeves again. This time, Peavy guilty. And Reeves will walk. Got a good look right there, yeah. but just couldn't get it to go. Still 17 seconds left. Reeves, as we mentioned earlier, out of Champaign, Illinois. The senior is 6'2". He's averaging nine a game. From the free throw line, only 52%. And he's hit two of his first three. And that really flips the table here and makes yes. it a two-possession game. And Reeves the righty again. He's three of four when A&M needed it the most. Now 15 to play for Peavy. And he lost oh. it out of bounds. Turnover, Governors. And We've the governor faithful who have come tonight will get up and put their coats on. And I mean a mass exodus. Here's Randolph. And be careful not intentionally fouled yeah. in with your G. And now Randolph will walk the other way. And is there an AM Rattler on the floor you would least like to foul? It would be the guy <laughs> going to the free throw yep. line right now. Randolph with 26 on the night. 11 of 15 from the field, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, and now it's There's 3 of 5. But again, double bonus here. A 5 point lead for AM with 11.3 to go. And now Randolph good on the second, and now smartly AM will call a timeout. Yeah. And wants to take it full. We'll see exactly what we've got here. So just a couple of things to mention. 
76-70, A&M leads with 11.3 to go. Austin Peay will have the basketball when play resumes. Uh, you're looking for the long baseball pass here and must get a shot off early? Yeah. At this point, you're probably looking to try to get a three. And you're not in the, yeah, you're not in the situation where really, Zach, you can take the best shot available. You've got no, you got to get an early three. And, uh, I mean, hope it goes in and – you know, at this point, you need someone like who Reggie Miller in the game, Tracy McGrady, some of those guys. That can <laughs> <laughs> Zach Glotta. <laughs> Did I mention Joe Simmons, uh, baby? There's, there's going back in Governor Pass. <laughs> yeah. Going to need a few of those guys as well. Yeah. i tell you, uh, just the tale of two teams, two nights, two different looks for the Governors. And I thought for the most part they responded really well last night. Tonight, they just lost that lead down the stretch. Yeah. And when they need to kind of counterbalance and answer it to maybe keep it a one-possession game, they were just not able to do that. And yeah. as that slim lead grew, and then all of a sudden you look up and A&M's up 11. Yeah. And then you're, you're, you're chopping back at the lead, and you're able to do that if you're Austin P. but still a long ways to go. Here's Peavy. Got to get one up quick. Now Taylor for three. It's no good. Tapped Got around it. back out front. Can Piaz control it? Yes, it will be Austin P. Basketball with 2.3 to go. But not in a very favorable time frame for the governors. I'm trying to find my goodbye for the night. <laughs> as I get ready for that. We'll be <laughs> leaving you as soon yeah. as This one is over with, 2.3 to go. Now, again, the Governors have got to launch one here and launch it early. You know, if you're the Governor fan and, and looking for the silver lining here, it's uh, this is a game that's going to prepare you for a Murray State, for a conference uh, schedule. You got, you know, you got some young guards who are put in a position here that they really haven't been in all year long. You know, so there was still the name of the game for these uh, these governors is got to start limiting turnovers. The, the turnovers are a, a little fewer than what we saw last night, but still the, the moments in which we turned the ball over were uh, – and not what you want to, yeah, 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 not what you want to yeah, see. And that's a great point. And I'll tell you another observation, you know, obviously the talent difference from McKendry to A&M is, is very prominent. Yeah. But even if you shriek those numbers of turnovers that you commit, there's still that talent gap there that's just yeah. not related yep. in the statistics when you can say, hey, we, we cut our turnovers down by six or eight, but, you know, the talent level is not – yeah. comparable so yeah the governor's got a lot to work on his football coaches would say they've got a lot of tape to look at they're gonna have some things here yes, they're gonna they see do. some teams very similar to this in the conference nope here's g at the buzzer no good no good so the final score tonight is both teams respectfully waving each other per ncaa regulations florida a&m wins their first game of the season on the road in clarksville the final score, Florida A&M 76, Austin P 70. For Zach Glotta, Bob Bilbin saying so long for Clarksville again. The final score, Florida A&M 76, Austin P 70. This game and all others are now available on the ESPN Family and Networks at the ESPN app. Good night, everyone.